Because we just start. Try with. streaming that, and Netflix chose. But I mean, the Xbox they sold million for a second. Because yeah. um, I think we have a question there in the back. I want to put it. You got to say more than <laughs> or a statement. <laughs> you're, you're quick to grade the consumer electronic industry um, off of what we wanted to see, what we want to see. But on the international theme, there's an African saying, says, you want to go fast, go alone. You want to go far, go together. Somebody's going together. <coughs> you got businesses, you have Sony and Apple and, and all these, they're not working together. They're not working together for a reason. They want to make their own dollars. Now, a lot of the industry that, that some of the progress, I think, can be made are being kept back because of lawyers and business decisions, not technical decisions. And that's what's the sad part about it. That's why we're doing it alone. Or that's why the, the consumers do it. Carlos, I'd like to yeah. comment. I mean, I, I agree. And I, this is actually what you bring up is an extension of what I said when I was doing my, my grading. Uh, what we started to see this year before CES, and especially at CES, is this, this single point TV or, or uh, Blu-ray player box. We found one today that has Blu-ray and BitTorrent in the same box. <laughs> I'll leave it to Jason Chan at Gizmodo oh, to find awesome. that. Um, so, gorgeous thing, you know, but it's not, it's not connected in the home, it's, it's connected to the internet. But, but what I think, and I hope, is that there will be uh, kind of a critical mass. The more products you buy that have uh, some sort of IP address, some sort of connectivity with, uh, with upgradable firmware, you're going to, this is where the lawyers just can't keep up with, with the programmers and the boxes oh, others. Well, so let's get Boxy involved. I mean, the fact that there is another layer of people who are building bootleg True. software to, to take hold of those. You know, well, I'm optimistic about technology, Gizmodo's rah, rah, rah gadgets, but I, if there's a critical mass of this and a turning point, we may see the connectivity well, whether Sony to, likes it or not. Hollywood's trying to hold on to their content, like the music industry trying to hold on to theirs. And they can't. <laughs> well, are not in my sense. The thing is, I don't think so. I mean, I think the, the, the movie industry, the, the, the Hollywood is scared enough at this point. They've seen the, the music industry implode and, and, and have realized that they have to do something. I mean, they're trying things left and right. Some of them are horribly wrong. Some of them are okay. Some of them are, are somewhere in between. What's the right solution? I don't think we're going to know for another five, six years. And it may be too late for the Hollywood by the time they do. No, no, no wait. Because, because you've got a big change. You've got a big change. That, and you've got two studios that this week have decided, okay, you can put movies onto an SD card. Who would have thought of that a week ago? Is it going to get a lot of play this week? I don't know. But, but the mindset of the Hollywood holding on to it forever, no. They, they want to get this out through 100 channels. They'll even consider 39 cents a movie if they could keep getting that because the enemy is free. And the enemy is rotten quality. Until, and you go, SAG, until SAG wants their part, they want another show. <laughs> well, well now, you, now you've got a tricky thing because, uh, quick sidebar, when DRM was announced about a decade ago, I mean, you, you can find it on the internet where DRM and then DRM suddenly pops up. <laughs> Lawyers were saying it first. And the artists we interviewed in, in New York and Nashville and LA, they actually were sold a bill of goods that DRM, digital rights management, you mean I'm going to get credit for doing that drum solo on the end of that album finally? <laughs> That's great, because it's not, it's not a joke, because a lot of artists, uh, their only credit is they're, they're the second gaffer on a Steven Spielberg film. And that line going up there is, the, is their ticket to advance in their career and their pride. So digital rights management to the artistic community meant we're finally going to get credit. Maybe buried the metadata somewhere, we're going to get credit. And then they wake up the next morning and, what do you mean this stuff won't play on the other player? So DRM got forwarded as far as the artists are going, and, and, if, and if you have uh, published works, as, as, as many of us here do, you'd like to get credit. You want the, those royalties down the road. And, and the only reason SAG, I think, uh, you're worried about here is SAG's get, those actors are getting a lot less per capita than the lawyers are getting. And if anybody ever published a schedule of where that money goes, you know, there might be people going out with torches in the streets to realize that the, the people we love on screens of all sizes are getting a fraction of their share, or the guys behind the camera, because because lawyers and brokers have taken this huge, huge uh, chunk of it out. Yeah, the reason I said that is that it's, it's not a technical problem. Right. But I do want to capture a really important point that you said, and that is that um, right now, I do believe that most of the companies participating in CES 2009 are in fact participating in an industry with the current constructs. 
which is to say they're trying to go it alone. They're trying to build their end-to-end -end service device uh, ecosystem stack. They are uh, trying to do category by category studios. Uh, licensed to this category, that category, this usage model. So yes, they're executing the current construct because there is no alternative construct, but the dialogues are fundamentally changing because I do think that a studio is probably sees more utility, um, more value, the opportunity to sell more content if in fact it can license content in such a way that any device could play it. I think that you would see more utility uh, a better experience from a customer perspective if you could license content and not have to sit there and count the number of copies that your DRM uh, right. has, has, uh, has counted so far this week. And so the, the device manufacturers and the service manufacturers in fact realize they can't make it alone. I think the content providers would rather license to the entire ecosystem, not one at a time. And some of the enabling technologies, whether it be H.264 or what we're seeing with the next generation DRMs. The next generation DRMs are all domain based. So now you register communities, trust circles, and your content into a domain. And how far you extend that circle of trust, or how many devices or members you bring into it, is really now a much simpler discussion that doesn't involve uh, lawyers but actually starts bringing in um, the notion of, uh, uh, of the consumer and the experience. I think the other point that I see that's different at this CES, uh, not to take away from all the tremendous progress that's been made in the SIMPI committees, in the DLNA committees, et cetera, is that, again, the participants, um, and it is a cross-functional set of participants, content, service, devices, and consumer advocates, and you are a big part of the consumer advocacy, um, are, are really looking towards um, uh, the notion that um, where can we learn from the past? I mean, if we look at the, one of the most successful formats, um, the DVD format, it delivered on the promise. And it was a very simple promise that a retailer could understand, that a consumer could understand. You buy once, you play anywhere. All you need to do is see the DVD logo you didn't have to see what encryption that DVD was on. You didn't have to go back and see what red laser is driving that DVD. It's, here's my content, here's the device, it just works. Um, so the way that HP's trying to shift the dialogue and in terms of how we align with some of our partners is let's not start with the technology. Let's not start with the artifact. Let's not start with the algorithm. Let's look at which behaviors were successful from an experience model, from an industry model. And if we start with the experience and then see which technologies enable that experience, as opposed to start with the, arguing about the technology and seeing how many experiences might or might not be enabled by the technology, then you have a very, very di different discussion. And I would posit that the discussion framed in that way is fundamentally new this year. Now, well, no. Year, that's a, well, it's new this year, and it's new in this decade. In 1982 or 1983, the C consumer electronics industry was an ad advocacy industry for what consumers wanted to do with their media. They went to the Supreme Court to make sure that people could record TV uh, with, with Betamax, right? So at some point in the last 20 years, far, yeah, exactly. And lost millions and, and millions. While and, 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 the and the consumer electronics industry and the movie studios were antagonists. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What's happened in the last 25 years that changed that so that the consumer consumer electronics industry and the and Hollywood are, are, are buddies and it's the consumer what the consumer wants is kind of oh uh, yeah they'll take whatever we shovel at. I mean that, that's my question. Tony? You think it's Tony? Uh, I mean that their business model has always their their content side has always conflicted partially. I mean look at this much. Uh, I mean the way they've handled media, the way they screwed up the, their whole handling of portable portable Music audio and, yeah. and video SDMI has issue. driven by protecting SDMI. content that they ended up, I think, uh, I mean they lost an, a huge market to Apple just by being playing by some, a stupid defense. So any, any discussion, because I think we actually started uh, going to, to a nice thread there, anything else from, uh, from the audience in terms of where we are uh, here so far? Okay, so the cameras are still pointing at us. All right, so um, so where do we go from here? Um, if I were to kind of summarize some of the 
the themes and threads that we picked up. Um, simplicity, utility, uh, ease of use, um, getting to a model where I don't have to make a technology decision before I make a product or content decision. What else have we left out or should we kind of bring forward to the discussion to make to at least ensure that discussion moves forward as we go into CES yeah. 2010? Yeah, there's there's got to be some way for content producers to make money. <coughs> you know, yeah. Otherwise, there won't be professionally produced content. People are going to continue buying discs in Best Buy. I mean, uh, you walk into Best the Buy, foreseeable future. Yeah. 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 Well, you know, for, for now, I mean, my mom is never going to reach a point where she goes to I know, Amazon. but she won't buy Blu ray. Well, She'll just keep her DVD well, player. True. So it'll, the margins on that will go down and down and down. Well, that's definitely true. So the, yeah. Um, one of the things that I'm actually surprised about that I saw um, at one of the press events, uh, I believe it was Western Digital, they were showing a new dock for their hard drive. And you put the hard drive in, it shows. And what blew me away was the how excited this representative was about their their DOS browsing experience. On it. <laughs> if you literally you plug in the hard drive and it shows you like directory listings and it's like, you know, 8.3 characters. And I just looked at it and said like, you know, it, it seems like a lot of the industry still doesn't understand how much design and usability matters. They're focusing on the cool technology side and not realizing that it looks like it was designed in 1992. Yeah. So the industry is very slow. I, mean, I, I completely agree. I mean, kind of one of the products that, that's really impressed me this CES is, is the new Cisco um, Media Hub and their, and their wireless home audio system, which you know does the job of a, of a Linux-based NAS device, but actually the user experience they built on top of that in terms of ease of use, ease of control, in terms of the content has been great on that device, I think is a big issue. Um, I think the theme of simplicity needs to be extended because we've all got tons of media now. Um, I think you, you made the point, well, actually, we need help kind of tagging it. We need help getting get our, our artwork displayed on there. And so, so we do get very much. I, I know you hate iTunes, but what we need is iTunes for video. I mean, iTunes brought the ability to rip a CD to, to anyone. I mean, you put the CD in the disc, it says, do you want to, do you want to copy this to your iPod? It's idiot proof, it tags it, it gives it cover art, it, it gives you all the metadata that you need to browse it. Right now, there's nothing that does meta. The ripping we're great at. The video ripping is, is to the point now that, that most anyone here in this room could do it easily. Video tagging, video keeping track of all the, the metadata to go there's a, there's a so like a grace it's note, beyond me. Like grace note of some kind. Exactly. Well, I mean, you, you, do you use like my movies, a media center, or my movies? You know, I don't use my media center because I can't stream the formats that I like to rip to. Oh, okay. Yeah, so media center is useless to me. Well, if you look at products like my movies for, for Windows, and which is it's a great, in, it's great. If it, if it did what I wanted, then it would we'll be. Do sleep for you. It will do, it'll do sleep on work for you. Without a doubt. Yeah. yeah. Um, there's a product on Mac called um, I can't remember what it's called but anyway. There's a Mac product that's the same. Yeah. So, um, not only is our next speaker here, Phil McKinney, but his, his props are actually starting to show as well. So we're going to uh, try and maybe um, begin wrapping up a, a little bit. And I want to keep going two directions. Um, so one is, um, both from, I think, the perspective of your unique communities and where you see the industry, um, what advice could each of you um, give HP in terms of how we continue to be successful within the current construct, but begin pushing forward some of the key enablement themes uh, that each of you have touched. And, and uh, we'll, we'll start with Ross. Okay, um, <clears throat> I think Wilson made a, made a good point talking about the 71st time solution for the mainstream. Uh, and uh, you know, some of the work on DECE uh, goes forward. It's, yes, it's a rights managed environment, but I really like the idea of domains. Uh, well, to the extent I like the idea of DRM, uh, I like the idea of domain-based uh, uh, DRM. Uh, certainly a lot of players in that pool, and uh, just uh, you know, the hope is that um, the, the broader vendor support will prevent it from, from being another place for sure. Simple one for me. I think in, in, in any industry, that the, the businesses that win are the ones that are really obsessed with, with looking after their customers and not protecting their profit margins. So I think um, HP or any organisation you know, has to be prepared to take a little bit of business pain to really ensure that the customer knows that you're on their side. Um, and I think if you if you don't do that, the customer has the power and they can innovate around you, and they will find the solution that works for them. Be that a software hack, be that a hardware hack, or be that a torrent client that pops up on a on, on a blue, blue uh, on a Blu-ray player. So um, so just listen to your customer. I'd say you know 
echoing kind of my theme for this is HP needs to look more at the point to point. Um, there were the a good example is your latest media center extender, the Connect, I think you call it. Um, if I'm not mistaken, requires a PC to be running in order to buy a movie. Um, that's a kind of design issue, um, and, you know, and you and I have actually talked about it in the past, but that's, that's one of those design issues that really would irk a consumer. Because they, their, their computer could be asleep in their office and they, they're trying to buy a movie and they can't. This idea that the simplicity, part, part of that comes from if you can just talk to the internet, just talk to the internet. Don't make it an ecosystem before each thing works as a standalone beneficial product. Make products that are awesome for consumers, not, not for engineers and not for product managers. Trust people who are paying you money. If I pay you $20 for a copy of The Dark Knight, trust me. I mean, I've, give, I've given you my money in exchange for, this isn't an HP, but I, you know, I, I, if I'm giving you money in exchange for, for goods or services, you know, I've invested in that. Somebody's going to pirate it, for sure, of the millions of people that buy the disc. But, I mean, for the most part, the customers that are paying the money should get the best experience, and that's what they should be paying for. Yeah, it's, it's quite the power of the PC. In between keystrokes, in between sessions, um, look at my video, help me organize it, uh, help me put it into the category so you can find those movies you've already ripped. Uh, make it easier for me. As that gets easier, new IMDBs for the video are going to come along. It will help that as well. Um, but exploit the power of the PC to make it easier for me to find in my growing catalog of personal web and, and associated media. Anything from the audience? Please in the back. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would like uh, HP and mm -hmm. the other companies to realize that although this is a center for entertainment, we're talking about pushing material around, content around. And that content is can be business content, it can be educational content. It's it's so what I'm asking you to do is talk to your own divisions as well. I'm amazed how HP education doesn't know what HP consumer is doing at all. In the back. I'm sorry, right here. Um, blend Windows Media Center and Windows Home Server together. <laughs> right. But do it in a way working with Microsoft as to not create your own ecosystem. Because it's the same thing what you said is you have to have a PC on the most of use. Yeah. Which is, you know, don't be crazy. Yeah. I hear that a lot. Wait, bang on the about server that. is a PC. Well, what was right? interesting was... It's well, it's a Windows team. Well, guys, unfortunately, we've got to wrap up. You guys can carry. We're going to set up for the next session for the next ten minutes or so. You guys can carry on these conversations. These guys will stick around for a little bit. So let's thank the panel for the time.